At the International Migration Institute, our aim is to develop a long-term perspective on international migration as part of global change. At IMI, Dr Ali Chaudhary is working on a Marie Curie project funded by the European Commission called Transnational Migration, Citizenship and the Circulation of Rights and Responsibilities. In this project, Ali uses secondary survey data and quantitative analysis to investigate the relationship between political integration and transnational politics among immigrants in Europe. As a sociologist, I think of migration as a set of three interrelated processes that are embedded and shaped by historical and contemporary political, social, and economic contexts. These three processes include mobility, settlement, and belonging. By mobility, I mean the actual process of moving, so crossing an international border, whether it's coming as a refugee, whether it's moving as an economic migrant through a plane or across a border by land. By settlement, I refer to more the processes of what happens, the steps of settling in a new country, finding a house, establishing residency, getting a job, trying to basically get into school, maybe getting education for your kids. Belonging is the final stage, and this is in some ways the trickier one to study as a social scientist because it doesn't always necessarily take place in one country. This is where we see how the human dimension of globalization is manifested in migration. The UN estimates that there are currently approximately 230 million international migrants. This is 230 million people permanently living outside of their countries of birth. Most of these migrants currently live in North America and Europe. Now, today, as in the past, immigration and immigrants continue to be a controversial political issue where we see fears and anxieties, as well as dreams and opportunities, emerging in relation to the rapid demographic, social, economic, and political transformations that are unfolding across Europe and North America. But the effects of migration processes are not only felt in the receiving countries of North America and Europe. Because migration is a multi-directional process, immigrants can continue to engage and affect a variety of different aspects of life in the countries from which they immigrated from, their origin societies. So rather than thinking of migration as a linear one-way process between country A and B, I draw on research on transnationalism to think about the ways in which immigrant communities create a sense of belonging by integrating into their receiving societies while maintaining a variety of cross-border linkages with their countries of origin. These linkages can take form in three different types of domain, the economic, the social, and the political. Economic transnational linkages include a variety of activities such as sending money home in the form of financial remittances, as well as creating different types of entrepreneurial opportunities that might connect one's receiving an origin country. In the social domain, Transnational linkages include the variety of social networks that emerge through migration, as well as the circulation of information and ideas that again connect places of origin with receiving societies. Finally, the political domain of transnationalism examines the different ways in which migrants engage in political activities in both their receiving and origin countries. These political activities can include everything from protesting to joining civil society organizations, as well as taking part in electoral politics. Here at the International Migration Institute, I'm currently working on a project which is funded by the European Commission through a Miri Curie ITN action. In this research, I'm investigating the relationship between immigrant political integration in Europe and cross-border transnational political engagement with countries of origin. The specific research question I'm investigating is whether voting in European national elections decreases or increases immigrants' likelihood of voting in homeland elections. My findings are that migrants who have voted in the last national European election are likely to have also voted in their last homeland election. In addition, migrants that are ineligible to vote in national European elections are also likely to have voted in their homeland election. What this shows is that migrants that are keen on activating their political voice or their political agency will do so if they're given the access to participate in electoral politics of the receiving and the origin country. In other words, those migrants that want to activate their democratic voice will vote here and there. The broader implications of my findings are that by allowing migrants to participate in the national elections within Europe, governments would be able to create more opportunities for successful integration in other domains of social life. This may ultimately help create more social cohesion in cities across Europe. In addition, my findings show that migrants' political participation in European national elections may foster transnational political engagement with origin countries, which may ultimately strengthen democratic institutions and encourage more political participation across the globe.